What is up my friend, it's Danny, and today I'm going to talk about how we may be able to reduce our risk of cancer from broccoli sprouts and sulforaphane. Now from all the things I've learned over the past few years, I really believe that broccoli sprouts are one of the most powerful, if, the, if not the most powerful superfoods on the planet. And the great news is we can make them from home very easily and they're very cheap to make as well. So broccoli sprouts, which is what you can see in this container here, they obviously grow to become the mature broccoli that we all make in the supermarket, we all buy in the supermarket. And broccoli is part of the cruciferous vegetable family, which also includes cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kale, spinach, and many others. And the cruciferous vegetable family is special because when we eat them, they contain compounds called isothiocyanates, which are known for their health benefits. But the reason that broccoli and broccoli sprouts are so special is because they contain isothiocyanates called sulforaphane, which are especially powerful when it comes to their anti-aging properties. And as such, a lot of research and studies have been done around them. So the focus of this video is all about sulforaphane found in broccoli and broccoli sprouts. And I really believe that sulforaphane is a miracle compound when it comes to health and longevity, and one we need to be aware of. So one of the reasons that sulforaphane is so special is because it's the most potent naturally occurring dietary activator of a genetic pathway in the body called NRF2. And NRF2 is an amazing pathway, we all have it, and it controls over 200 genes in the body, many of which can slow down cellular aging. So here are four things that the NRF2 pathway is believed to do. So number one, it's believed to protect from cancer. And it does that by reducing the amount of DNA damage that we get from carcinogens. And carcinogens like benzene are known to cause cancer. And it does that in two ways. So number one, it actually reduces the conversion of pro-carcinogens into active carcinogens, but it also increases our excretion of carcinogens from the body, so we get rid of them more. So it's like a double whammy with that one. So that's the first benefit, it protects from cancer. Second thing it's believed to do is actually believed to deactivate inflammatory genes in the body. And if you didn't know, reducing inflammation in the body is probably the most powerful thing that you can do to reduce risk of disease across the board. So that's a great benefit. Third thing it does, it increases the activation of antioxidant genes in the body, which again can protect from DNA damage, which is great. And the fourth thing it does, it lowers the accumulation of damage in our cells. And over time, if our, damage, if our cells get too damaged, they can become non-functional. So that's a great benefit as well. So in short, the NRF2 pathway is an amazing pathway. It's, it's a lot of benefits to it. And we can increase its activation by eating sulforaphane, which is found in broccoli sprouts. So personally, I just want to hammer my NRF2 pathway as much as possible so I can get those health and longevity benefits. So what I'm going to do now is talk about some studies that help us to show the association between eating cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and reducing our risk of cancer. So the first study was around bladder cancer. And this study showed that men that ate between two or more half cup servings of broccoli a week had a 44% reduction in bladder cancer incidence compared to those that had less than one serving per week. And another study showed that men who already had bladder cancer had a 57% reduction in bladder cancer mortality if they ate four servings of broccoli a month compared to those that ate one serving per month. That's a big difference there, which is great. Next is breast cancer. So multiple studies have shown that women who eat at least one serving of cruciferous vegetables a day have between a 20 and 50% reduction in breast cancer risk compared to women that just eat less than one serving per week. So that's a great benefit there as well. Um, next study is around lung cancer. So this study showed that smokers who ate at least four and a half servings of raw cruciferous vegetables a month had a 55% reduction in lung cancer risk compared to those that had two and a half servings per month, which is pretty powerful. Next, next study is about prostate cancer. So this study showed that men that ate between three and five servings of cruciferous vegetables a week had a 41% reduction in prostate cancer risk compared to those that had less than one serving per week. Now, next is where it gets very interesting and relevant to, our, to this video. So this study followed men who already had prostate cancer, and they were given 60 milligrams of sulforaphane a day. Remember, sulforaphane is all about this, the topic of this video, basically. And 60 milligrams of sulforaphane is roughly about 140 grams of fresh broccoli sprouts, and that's the amount I have in this container here. And by doing that, they managed to slow the doubling rate of a cancer biomarker 
called prostate specific antigen or PSA by 86%, which is I think amazing. So by having 60 milligrams of sulforaphane a day, they slow the doubling rate of PSA by 86%. Now another study that followed men again who already had prostate cancer, they were given 35 milligrams of sulforaphane a day. So not as much as the original study that gave them 60, but they still managed to slow the doubling rate of PSA by 57%, which is still very, very good. So there does seem to be a dose dependent effect, meaning the more that we eat, the more benefit that we'll get. So those are some pretty powerful associations of studies, which I think make a good case for eating cruciferous vegetables and reducing our risk of cancer. Okay, so the title of this video is broccoli sprouts. So why not broccoli? Well, to answer that, I need to talk about how this compound sulforaphane is actually made. So sulforaphane is actually made from a precursor molecule called glucoraphanin. Uh, glucoraphanin is found in the broccoli and the broccoli sprouts. And glucoraphanin is converted to sulforaphane by an enzyme called myrosinase. And that process happens when the broccoli is chopped, chewed or crushed. And that's actually the fence mechanism of the broccoli to ward off bugs. So if a bug tries to eat the broccoli or the sprouts or the actual seeds itself, um, the cells will actually break apart and that will allow the enzyme to react with the glucoraphanin to make the sulforaphane. And sulforaphane has a bitter taste, so if the bug eats it, it will go and just kind of fly off basically. So the, the broccoli seed and, and sprouts are left alone, so that's kind of why it happens. So what we want to do, as I say, the, the, the reason that the broccoli sprouts are better than eating broccoli is because the broccoli sprouts actually contain a hundred times more of this precursor molecule called glucoraphanin than the broccoli does. So we get more bang for our buck basically. Now, it's been shown that the actual seeds themselves contain even more glucoraphanin than the broccoli sprouts, but they're, they're really, really bitter tasting and they're hard to eat. So I went through a two week period of just grinding, grinding them up in my coffee grinder and just downing them in the water every day. But it was just really, really bitter and it made me feel a bit sick and I came to dread it every morning. I wasn't looking forward to doing it. And the last day I did it, I downed it down and I was sick in that sink over there. My entire breakfast was lost basically. And uh, since then I haven't been able to go back to, to having the seed. I just think, ooh, every time I think about it. So I recommend just sticking to the actual broccoli sprout itself. It's a little bit bitter, but it's nowhere near as bad as the actual seed. So unless you're really hardcore and you want to give that a try. So as I say, the, the sulforaphane is made when we actually chop, crush, or chew the broccoli sprouts. So I think the easiest way to prepare it, which is what I do, is just put it in a blender and have it in a smoothie, basically. And we want to eat it raw because it's been shown that excessive heating can actually de deactivate that enzyme called myrosinase, so we won't get the conversion of the glucoraphanin to sulforaphane, which is what we don't want. So if you boil it, you won't get those health benefits. Now, that being said, it has been shown if you lightly steam the broccoli sprouts, it can actually increase the conversion or the production of sulforaphane. And it's also been shown that if you freeze the broccoli sprouts and then you blend them up from frozen and drink them quickly that will also increase the the production of sulforaphane as well which is great now you can make them from home very easily all you need are the seeds which you can buy in your local health food store or you can probably buy them online as well i recommend organic seeds like with all things you need a jar like this one any kind of big jar and you need some something to drain it with so you need to rinse it and drain it every day. So I just use like a little tea sieve with an elastic band. I go for the, the cheap option basically. And you need water, so that's all you need. Now, if you want to learn how to do it step by step, I will make a video about it. And when it's ready, I will put the link here. So check that out if you want to. So that is basically it. So let me do a quick recap and then I'll wrap up the video. So multiple studies have shown that we, if we eat cruciferous vegetables, we can potentially reduce our risk of cancer. And that's believed to be down by, to the, the compounds in the cruciferous vegetables called isothiocyanates. And broccoli and broccoli sprouts, they contain an isothiocyanate called sulforaphane, which is special because it's the most naturally occurring dietary activator of this genetic pathway in the body called NRF2. And NRF2 is known to protect from cancer, it's known to deactivate inflammatory genes, it's known to activate antioxidant genes, and it's known to slow down the, the accumulation of damage in cells as well. So the sulforaphane that we get from broccoli sprouts and broccoli is made from a precursor molecule called glucoraphanin, and that, that, is, that conversion takes place when we chop, crush, or chew the broccoli or the sprouts. So we want to blend them up in a blender, that's the easiest way. And remember, we don't want to excessively heat the broccoli sprouts 
because that will deactivate the enzyme arosinase and we won't get that conversion of the glucoraphanin into sulforaphane. Now, a little tip, if you want to lightly steam them, that will actually increase the production of sulforaphane. Um, if, you want to, um, if, you can, if you want to freeze them and then blend them up from frozen and then drink them straight away, that will also increase the production of sulforaphane. So again, you can make these from home very easily. You just need the seeds and you need a, a glass container and, and, a, um, and some kind of drainer basically. And it takes about six days to make a, a batch. Um, that is it. So I hope you learned something today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please hit the subscribe button. And until the next time, please take care.